Yo, what's up guys? Alright, today we are doing another build video. This build video is going to be for an ultimate, most epic, most badass micro quadcopter ever built. Ever. No, just kidding. Uh, X have released a video of their 2 inch carrying a GoPro, doing power loops and stuff. So my attempts was to build a 2.5 inch with, uh, you know, pretty, t uh, pretty top of the line hardware and see if we can carry a GoPro. Um, I printed a GoPro mount. Uh, on my printer and we'll see if it will carry it only one way to find out so stay tuned we'll find out what's going in this build one more thing I wanted to add guys is I, uh, I I'm releasing a video of my proton build that I just built and my last build videos have been inside because it was cold out but it's nice outside now and I got a really nice workbench a nice area to work in but that day that I recorded that video it was trash day it must have been everybody's lawn day and the Air Force, the base, they must have been had some sort of crazy business going on because there was planes, trash trucks, lawn mowers, weed eaters, leaf blowers, and it was it was it was unacceptable. Editing the video made me uh, it was extremely frustrating. So hopefully we can get some uh, some quietness out here to where I can keep recording out here because you know you can't beat this natural lighting so I just wanted to throw that out there and I apologize if you guys watch that Proton video and you're like what the heck is all this noise going on I tried to fast forward through most of it and add some music and cut it down but it's it's just too much too much uh, too much noise and it was good content I thought so I wanted to put it out even though even though it was uh, the audio was just blasted by everything in the universe that day so um, hopefully this one goes a lot better uh, appreciate it guys all right, so these are going to be the main components for this build. I decided to go with the Hyperlite Tooth Fairy, the 2.4 inch. There was one other frame that um, I was interested in that swung a two and a half inch prop, and that was the X Hover Win 2 XL. But it was sold out everywhere, and <clears throat> I wanted to get this done. But uh, this seems like it's going to be a pretty solid frame, and I'll talk a little bit more about what I did differently than than. Um, how it comes from yeah, how they expect you to put it together um, for um, camera I'm going with the run cam micro swift 2 um, it's a great camera can't complain there receiver I'm going with the R XSR for telemetry so I can use um, Lewis scripts and smart audio um, with the TBS unify nano um, I'm pretty stoked about using that. For the antenna, I'm going to use the Furious uh, FPV Cloverleaf. Um, but if for some reason it's too big or in the way, I'll just use the dipole that comes with the Unify. Flight controller, we're running the Hilly Nation 20x20 flight controller. This is an excellent flight controller. I wired it up in one of my other micros. Um, it's kind of tedious soldering because the pads are so close to each other that when you try to solder, you kind of bridge them and then you got to wipe it off and stuff. But um, I mean, it's still doable, but this is an awesome flight controller. It's got a, a lot of features crammed in there for such a for such a small flight controller. I mean, it's got almost all the features that my Seal Racing F4 and Bardwell have, uh, minus a couple of things, and it's only a 20 by 20. So, um, nice flight controller. Uh, for ESC, I'm going with the Spedix. I run Spedix on all my race quads, so I decided to go with the uh, the Spedix. This is the IS20, uh, 20 by 20 stack, 20 amp, 4 in 1. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get great performance at Spedix. Uh, for motors, I'm going with the uh, Emax 1106 7500 KV. Um, I run these on another one of my builds. I've been through three other types of motors, and these right here have been the, the, the best motor uh, as far as durability. These things just hold up. There was one other motor that I wanted that I was interested in, and that was the... Uh, the Hyperlite 1106, um, 7122 kV. But since I already had a few of these, I figured I would just go ahead and and just use these ones instead, since I already had them. That way, all my micros are running the same motor. Um, for believe that is it. Um, I printed a 3D um, 3D. I print I 3D printed a uh, GoPro mount for this quad it will fit on here so that's really this that's really what I uh, my intentions with this build was to see if it'll fly this if it won't then no big deal and I wanted to try to print this um, on my 3d printer since I am new to 3d printing and uh, it came out pretty good I've been printing for about a week now and I'm pretty happy with how it turned out 
Um, also, I've got a, I printed a Unify Nano mount here. And we got some Brain 3D uh, Forever tubes. So like always, I am going to start by tinning up the ESC and getting it mounted in here. And then get the motors on and get them soldered up. Now, there's one thing that I changed on this frame, and there's one thing that I disliked about this frame. The one thing that I changed was they give you nuts for the bottom of these. Stand off just like the floss. And you tighten them up, and then the standoffs go on top of that. What I did was I screwed the standoff down, and it'll bottom out. But as long as you put some pliers on there and crank it down, it'll crank all the way down to here. I I think it'll work just fine. The reason that I don't like running the nut is because I have problems with on the floss with the standoff backing off and then the nut backing off a little bit and then the arms wiggle. Now that wouldn't be a problem with these boomerang style arms but I want as much thread as possible in the standoff because another problem I have on the floss is the standoff pulling threads out because these standoffs are just aluminum garbage really. They're cheap. You can go through them like crazy on the 5 inch quad. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this ESC tinned up. Do not tin up the pads on the top here because then it will interfere with your um, with your four in one port. So you want to tin up the bottom pads for your battery, and it looks as if that's where I'll be mounting my capacitor. You can also solder on the top or the bottom, whichever you choose. This is designed to be mounted like this. This is one, two, three, four. But with motor resource remapping, you can flip it upside down if you wanted. And then this you this would be one, two, three, four. But then you would just reorder the numbers. Or if you just wanted to solder into the bottom instead of the top, I guess you could. It's a pretty nice little ESC for a micro. Now we're moving on to the flight controller. I'm going to go ahead and tin up what we need. TX4, VTX signal, VTX positive. VTX negative. That's these three top pins right here for your S bus or for your uh, uh, receiver it wires directly up to an XM plus which we're not using because I want telemetry for Lewis scripts which I could just use the um, smart audio in my OSD but I like Lewis scripts on my radio so we're just gonna those are through holes we're just gonna solder them straight up This is your cam control pad, cam signal, cam positive, cam negative, and telemetry for smart port. So this thing's got a lot. You know, we can run telemetry. It's got our, it's got OSD. It's also got cam control, so you can control all your camera settings through your sticks. It's got. Um, all your VTX settings you need plus smart audio and then uh, if you wanted you could run spectrum with this it's got an extra UART um, up here and it's three volt pads five volt pads um, LED pads it's got a current pad so you can run a current sensor with it if you like it's a pretty solid flight controller I had repinned this um, the four-in-one 
uh, wire and I shorten it up a lot that way it can just go like that and we won't have to uh, worry about big long wires sticking out of there. The wires were originally a little bit shorter than this so that would have been a whole lot of wire hanging off of there and I'm also going to install this for the uh, TBS Unify Nano but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and wire up my camera wire and my video transmitter wire now. I'm going to go ahead and get this Unify wired up. You have 5 volts in, ground, this is 5 volts out, ground, video, and then uh, smart audio. So I'm going to go ahead and wire uh, solder on my pigtails and then get them soldered to the flight controller because I know that it's just going to be going right on top in this mount right here. It should just go right there like that. So let's go ahead and get that soldered up. Using the positive, negative, video, and then the white OSD. I'm going to go ahead and mount this down. I don't need to access anything under the board anymore. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this mount on top. Slide this camera down. It's a pressure fit camera, so no screws. Alright, this is the finished product without the top plate on. We've got the Runcam Swift 2 behind it. We have the RXSR with the antennas coming out the front. It is mounted to the back of the camera. We've got the IS-20, the Spedex IS-20 ESC with the uh, Hilly Nation Talon um, F4 flight controller. On top we have a TBS Nano with the whip antenna. I decided to go with the whip, but if I end up running the GoPro on top, you know, just to see how it flies, I'll probably try the other antenna up top.